Hi Stampin' Friends. Happy Wednesday. I am with you on Wednesday today. Again, like normal, 7 p.m. I'm just checking um, to make sure there's something. Oh, no, it looks fine. Um, yeah, I have to apologize for last week. That was really rough. I, I did get that new modem on Tuesday, um, but turns out that Spectrum hadn't activated it the way they needed to. And so the problems I was having, um, yeah, would have never resolved on their own. So, okay, so tonight should be better. I'm actually in St. Louis, so in the central time zone, so 7 p.m. Eastern came kind of quick here. Let's see. Okay, this looks good, I think. Hi, guys. Happy Tuesday. Wait, it's Wednesday. Oh, is this last week's that I'm looking at? Shoot. Um, no, I think I'm on. Um, yeah, no, this looks, this looks fine. Okay, so let me go ahead and get started. Okay, yeah. All right, so welcome. Thanks for joining me. Here, let me get this kind of centered here. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Karen. It was Tuesday last week, so um, yeah, that's where all messed up, but right. <laughs> Just be glad it's Wednesday and not Tuesday. All right. Um, all right, so what I have for you, okay, again, we're still in August, so um, $35 orders with me earn these fine sparkle adhesive back gems really pretty really fun for more than just holiday projects so love those they could be flower centers or you know whatever the blues and greens of christmas so love that um so just keep that in mind if you're shopping and you're under 150 dollars please use the host code that i have listed if it's not august of 2022 i always list it on the sidebar on my website at buckeyeinklings.com and then I take the benefits from those orders um, to buy and send these gifts. So that's how I like to share the host benefits I get from your orders. Okay, so thank you. Um, let me get going, huh? I think, is anyone else having trouble hearing? Just please let me know in the comments if so. So I'm going to assume it's okay. I, heard, I was able to hear it. Um... All right, so tonight I have a cute little set. I've been working on craft show projects. So I have one card that's not really for the craft show and then one favor that is. So they're both fun and easy. They're using the Christmas Scotty bundle, which is a punch bundle, which is really great because I'm actually using several punches and I think punch, punches just make things so much quicker. Um, and because I'm making this for craft shows, you know it's, it's easy, it's quick, you know, like you have to be able to make a lot of multiples. So it's also, I think, very adaptable to anything um, that you want to put in it. You can change the size. I'll talk to you a little about that. I've made it before in different patterns in different sizes in the past to hold larger hot cocoa pouch, uh, hot cocoa packs, that kind of thing. Um, but we'll talk about that. I really, I really skinnied this down at actually in terms of height in order to make this a four inch strip so I could be really efficient um, with the designer paper. And then this card is pretty easy and straightforward, but I wanted to show you a few tricks. First of all, remember to use this gorgeous uh, snowflake vellum. It's just a nice backdrop um, and so much um, more special than just regular vellum, which always dresses up a card anyway. So I've used my little Scotty and then the Alphabest bundle, and I'll show you how quick and easy I do these. I, I think this looks, when you're spelling out these words, like kind of a lot of work, and it's not. It's, they're fun to make, and it's really quick. I'll show you my trick, the way I like to put them together. So let's start with the card, and it's fairly simple, um, just a regular 
card base, five and a half by eight and a half, scored in half. Oh, good, okay. So Mary Jane, you're back and you here. <laughs> good. Okay, hi guys. Thanks for joining me, <laughs> especially after last week. My husband struggled with that, trying to get that internet working, and then finally had to have Spectrum come out, and they're like, oh yeah, we didn't activate the, the new modem. It's like, okay, great. <laughs> All right, so I'm layering this up. Oh yeah, I want to talk about this paper. Um, I've got a, a white mat that is four by five and a quarter, and then this plaid is three and seven eighths by, uh, what would it be? Five and one eighth, right? Let me say that right. Yeah. Five and one eighth. Okay. So this plaid is from this awesome here. Let me show you, show you it in the catalog instead of trying to pull out all the individual sheets, the gingham cottage collection. Beautiful. Um, it's a huge collection, 48 sheets, but it's 48 sheets. You'll be happy to have every one for each of the plaids in these colors, the ginghams. So, um, you know, like this is a pack. It's, it's expensive because it's a large pack, but I feel like I'm going to use every sheet of this. Okay. All, all the great colors. Um, you'll see, I've used one of these for Halloween later. Well, we'll, we'll see more of it in tonight's live. Okay, so I, let me just put that away. Like I said, I'm just layering up my base here, my card base, and we'll get this set aside while we make the other pieces. So the great thing about that little alphabet bundle, of course, you can write anything you want. So I've got some three quarter inch strips of paper and the stamps, okay, not, not very many letters that you actually have to get out to write kisses. And I like to do the background. So the, um, the stamps, uh, where are they? <laughs> where? Huh, had them all laid out here. Um, Anyway, I'm going to come across them as soon as I turn off. The, the stamps have these great like background patterns that you can stamp first to, to add some interest to the background so you're not just stamping letters. Oh, here they are. No, that's not it. All right, I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, so here I'm using the one that's leafy. There's one that's like polka dots. There's one that's stripes. Just lots of fun, interesting little backgrounds. And I'm doing it this way because you'll see it'll be easier to punch. Okay, and so that is um, soft sea foam that I stamped the background in. That matches my card base. And then I'm going to use a darker garden green for my letters. So I've got... Okay. I. S. S. I'll need another S at the end. Um, but I purposely didn't make these ahead because, you know, sometimes I do that to eliminate you watching all the busy work. This is not much busy work, I think, anytime you have a punch and it's, it's fun. So I'm just going to go down the line here. Okay. I, we always used to say kisses to Chip and he was a kisser. Winston is not a kisser. He will just stare at your face and put his nose to your nose. And my husband actually thinks that's better because he's not constantly licking us. But, um, you know, kisses from your dog are cute. All right. So, okay, moving on here. 
Um, I've got the other pieces ready to go. And like I said, this is pretty easy, but just, just a great reminder. Use these pieces to make an easy background. Um, I'm going to lock this down under where my Scotty is going to be. Okay, so I'm just going to use some of my my seal plus since I'm not using very much adhesive I will um, use the stronger adhesive and then I've got the punch you can stamp the dog too but I've been getting pretty lazy about this and just just punching them out of black and then I have actually stamped from that see that stamp set I have handy I stamped this in real red so that I could make a cute, easy little matching bow on my Scotty. Okay, so I just have that big background piece to, to pick from. And let's see, while I'm punching, I've got um, the bow punch. This is still in the annual catalog. I call it my leaf punch right now because it's the current leaf punch. And I've got like these strips of garden green. Just going to punch two of these and I know I don't need the whole length of this one so I'm just gonna get a partial length there okay so I'm getting my pieces together and so this is mistletoe right so we're gonna have the little white pearls on it and it'll go together um, yeah I cut off this last leaf and a lot of that stem to make my mistletoe because it's kind of long for this location. Wait, how did, how did I do? Oh, there. Here we go. Oh, shoot. I actually have a straight end on that leaf. I don't want that. Let me get a better piece. I shouldn't have tried to skimp. Okay. I don't want to have a flat end. Okay, so that, that will be up here. All right, so let me start putting some of these pieces down. Um, let's do the letters first, because that's seemingly the tedious thing. What I like to do is lay them out exactly where I like them. And I like them popped up, so I'll show you what I do. Um, and you could actually make straight lines pretty easily with this method too. A straight, like if you want to put all your all your letters to make a word in a straight line, you could use this method too. So take something that is like, um, I have these post-it strips. Uh, you could use a regular post-it note. You could use um, transfer tape. Like if, you, if you're a Cricut person that has that transfer tape for transferring vinyl to, um, you know, your vinyl design to your fabric, you could use that. So I'm just gonna turn this whole thing over and this is where I love my, my ends. I'm just going to go down the line here and add dimensionals to the back. Um, but you use some kind of temporary tape on the front, maybe even washi tape, just don't push it on too hard. Um, I've not done that in a while because I've had post-it notes or now this post-it tape for a while. Okay, and then you can get your, your word kind of fuss-free here. All right, there we go. We have kisses. We have that down. Let's see, we need... Need a little glue on his bow. <laughs> that's kind of a lot of glue for his bow. Well, that's not going anywhere. Okay, and my um, my mistletoe, I am just going to arrange to where I'm happy, and then dot the back side with glue.
and put that down. And here, let me put this on there a sec. Get some dimensionals for this guy. Oh, thanks, Brenda. Brenda also had schnauzers, so I think the little Scotty looks a lot like our schnauzers, too. <laughs> so, very, very similar shape. My schnauzer is a little taller. My schnauzer has longer legs than this guy. Okay, and then um, one of my favorite trims. This is out of the annual catalog. So this is something we've had for a while here. Ooh, my bow. Wow. See, I slid it on that big block of glue. That was too much glue. Okay. Sorry. Um, this... Mm, what's it called? It's got a fancy name. Simply Elegant Trim. This is in the annual catalog. Use it all the time, so I think it's a good basic. Alright, so simple card. Here, let's put that on with the glue dot. And I just kind of force it to behave and I push it down in the glue dot so that the pieces are where I want them. The little ends and everything are going the right direction. There. Okay, and then I have pearls, um, the adhesive pearls, uh, to go on as mistletoe. Right, because mistletoe, um, I believe these little berries are white. Someone tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> well, Winston is in Ohio, if you're wondering about Winston, Karen. <laughs> I'm in St. Louis. You may not have heard that in the beginning. I'm at my parents' house in St. Louis, so. Um, yeah, Winston is missing me, I'm sure. Okay, so there's our card. And then I want to show you this easy favor. And what I've got in it is these Walker shortbread. You can get these in a pack of 20 at World Market. And then I'm going to also add, well, this is pretty cute um, because it's the red tea bag. Uh, but World Market will also have a Christmas spice tea bag that is also red so that's probably what I'll get as soon as it's available but let's make this little um pouch and I'm gonna make one in red because I kind of want to see if I like that better okay so I've got a piece and like I said I cut this height down to four inches to make it super efficient with the paper um you can modify this if you have something taller to um you know, to, to put in your pouch. Of course, you can make it taller. You can adjust the width around. As you see, we're just wrapping kind of um, this paper around whatever you're, whatever you're um, containing. So you can make those adjustments. You'll be able to make the gusset wider too, and I'll tell you when um, you would change that. Okay, so I've done this in the past. In fact, we could probably look up a hot cocoa one that would be slightly different sizes. But let's do this one. This starts four by seven and a half. And on the seven and a half inch side, I'm going to score at two inches and five and a half. Okay, and I'm also, because it's always hard to get this little cutout centered correctly, I'm also going to make a mark halfway between those two lines, which falls at three and three quarters, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a little score line about a half inch long there, okay? And that way when I go to punch this, this little um, thumb, thumb hold, um, I'm gonna be able to center that easily. Okay, and then in this direction, we're scoring at three eighths. All right, and then, okay, so this is the score line that we made along the bottom at 3 8 And we are going to um, cut 
within the center section, I'm going to make a tab out of the um, bottom, the, the middle section. So I'm cutting a little angle here instead of cutting straight. Okay, so this, this will be like a tab that's left behind. And then I'm going to cut away this section. And I'm cutting a little bit above the line um, so that it won't be in the way of this um, flap. You'll see when we assemble it. Okay, so I'm making, making a tab in this bottom middle section by doing that on both sides. Again, staying above the line a little bit, so I'm cutting, um, you know, so that it won't be in the way of the flap that we're making. All right, so trim. Okay, punch next. I'm using, you can use any, any punch shape that you like. I'm using this Label Me Lovely shape, um, and it's pretty cool. Uh, I can just use the the depth of the little um, scallops and you know just make sure it's even on both sides that way by going to the same location and you can see I'm using this score line in the middle to line up I've even got like a, a tick mark there so that I can line that up easily and it's a pretty interesting little thumb hold to have for that pouch okay so I'm going to um, Adhere this together. We haven't made the gusset yet, I'm, but I'm going to put this together. Okay, so this is where the reason I cut higher than the score line is so that when this folds over, um, it there's no bulk in the way there right at the fold. Okay, and I'm going to use my Seal Plus to seal this up since this is a 3D project. I'll use that a little stronger. Put the back section together and go along the bottom. I'm even overlapping a little bit onto um, the back where I know this will be folded over um, and it will be hidden. So just kind of quick and dirty there. Okay, so there we have the base of the pouch. Now we want, we want the gusset. So to um, create that, I'm gonna bring in my scoreboard again. And so this is a total of three and a half inches wide. I'm going to score one half inch, or I'm sorry, one quarter inch in from each end. And that has a result of making this one half inch wide, okay? But the score line is one quarter inch from each end. So I'm scoring at three and a quarter. I'm just going down till I hit that fold, okay, from this, this flap. And same thing on the other side at one quarter inch, okay? And then I am going to um, fold this back and forth. I'm not really going to press hard down in this region. This is gonna kind of turn out at the end. It's a cute little, cute little taper, I think. So I like it that way. So I'm folding that back and forth. And then I'm going to open this up and force this to be kind of a flat panel on the side or even even push this in to get to get that to um, stay propped open I might even push that in a bit um, so that this becomes a valley okay and then at the end I'm just kind of kind of letting this kind of go and um, just turn right up into that point, okay? It naturally will, all right? So you can, you can crease this as hard or as, as light as you like, okay? Just to make that side. Okay, let's do that again on the other side. Okay, so this is where the quarter inch score, you can see is um, actually doubled here to make this with, okay? Because there was a quarter inch on the front and the back of that pouch when we scored it. Okay, same thing on the other side. We're kind of pressing this to make it straight. And when we get to the end, just kind of gently letting it flare out. And it, it makes a really cute little shape, you know, without a lot of effort, so love that. Um, and on this one, I made a a black scalp. Now these circles are from the uh, layering circles dies. This circle was 
the stitched one from the new stylish shapes dies I think that really makes that finished um, since it's only one one layer there okay so what are we doing here we're stamping for you that for you is from handmade wishes just a little um, tag set that's in the mini okay so there's for you and I'm gonna get my Scotty punch again and pop him up and let me also put him onto the label or the the, the mat layer And here, I'm gonna flatten this out to stick him down. See, you can, you can still store these flat if need be. But quick and easy little pouch for favors if you need something like that. And so you can imagine how to, you know, just change the width. And when you do that, add add to the length on the back, you know, so the, the back comes together, just, you know, double or, or add your dimension to the front and the back, make sure that works out. Um, you can change up the height very easily. You can change the gusset dimension to make it thicker. You can't, you know, you can't make these too terribly thick. I mean, it's not like it could be two inches thick. It would look kind of weird, I think but um, play around with it to, to house whatever you are trying to contain. And I just got my little bow here for his neck. And a glue dot. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I think I like it better in red too. Really pops better. Okay, so there we have it. It matches my card better, <laughs> so I'll put them together here. Let me take my, my Walker's um, shortbread and tea, put them together. See, I didn't mind this being shorter because I think it's cute because the packaging on this shortbread is so cute. If that, if that sticks out, I think it's fine. I don't know, maybe it needs a little green or something too, like a little, a little green bow and some red red um, pearls or something. Um, but there's the set. Oh, I did make a couple more of these. I actually made it in green too from that same paper. So now what do you like, red or green? I probably like the red best. Um, and then I also made, because we have so many great patterns in that gingham cottage paper, um, I made a witch version. So this one uses uh, the bewitching bundle with the witch hat builder and also uh, greetings from I think this set is called best witches um, so and then that orange paper I don't have any Halloween candy to stick in there um, but there's lots of different things at Halloween time I think that would fit nicely so okay so there are my two Christmas projects and then little alternates here so thanks guys for joining me that went better and i was more relaxed because i knew i was connected <laughs> so thanks for your patience last week oh thanks karen yeah the the witch hat i love this witch hat a lot and especially because it has that little spider to go with it thank you thanks mindy um hope you guys have a great week actually two weeks i will be off next week because i expect to be down in New Orleans for our demonstrator um, leadership convention, well, conference. So I will miss you next Wednesday night, um, but should be back the following week. 
Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Oh, I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Good night, guys.